As you can see currently this little petrol tank is a little bit tired. There's a bit of a damage over here which I'm working on. Um, I'm going to attack it with uh, 80, 180, 240 and 300 grit sandpaper. Then if I'm happy with it we're going to move on to the next stage which is high belt primer. Once I'm happy with the general shape of it and I knocked off most of that body filler um, I can move up the grades um, from 80 to 180 then 320 and 400 and so on and so forth and what it does basically the higher grade will repair the heavy scratches done by the previous grade so I'm moving to 180 just to get rid of some of them scratches then I move to 240 carry on until I'm happy with um, the surface so now I'm ready to prime this bad boy and I'm using high build primer uh, 2k primer and for this particular brand it's a 4 to 1 mixing ratio that means 4 part primer to 1 part 2k activator I'm shooting the primer through a 1.4 nozzle gun. There's nothing special about this gun, it's just a a normal gun. <laughs> it's not super expensive, it's not super cheap. But it's got 1.4 nozzle tip setup so that helps shooting that thick primer fluid quite nicely. Two layers later and we're done with that step. The beauty about the 2K primer, it's pretty much ready to work within half an hour. That'll give me time to clean up my gun and I'll get on it. Now we have the primer fully dry, rock solid. I'm gonna attack it with some guide coats and I'm gonna use the uh, dry powder guide coat. I'm a big fan of that stuff. What it is, is just a bit of dry powder on the sponge and you can rub it in the surface and it will be very very beneficial showing you um, when imperfections are high and low spots basically as what guide code does now it doesn't look like anything right now but it becomes very obvious when I start sanding it down it will basically show me the imperfections and yes majority of them imperfections are from um, the orange peel effect from the gun itself but there's going to be plenty of scratches and spots I've never seen before and I'm basically going to sanding it down until everything is the lighter grey colour over here which won't take long at all getting better and by the way guys if you want to drink this dry powder guy coat I can use wet and dry so if you worry about your sandpaper being clogged, you can just spray some water on it. It's not going to wash it away, but it's going to help slide and guide through that sandpaper. And just like this, we got surface ready for a base coat. I'm going to carry on through the whole petrol tank and we'll take it from there. After all this I'm ready to apply a white base coat for it and this particular paint I'm using uh, the mixing ratio is one to one so you put one part of a base coat and one part of thinness to make it a bit more easier to shoot for, uh, for the gun and there's nothing special about it this is just a white base coat and later on I'm gonna go over it with a white pearl but there we go one to one mixing ratio And the beauty of that paint system is it's ready to be handled within half an hour, maybe 45 minutes of painting the base coat. 
as you can see I didn't focus heavily on the top part because that's going to be covered with a second layer of blue as a two-tone but I rather focus heavily on the bottom part when it's supposed to be just arctic white with my pearl white underneath don't worry about too much um, but over here because the nipa is going to go down here but the rest of it is looking rather nice and that's what I'm going for now I can mask the whole thing up and prepare the second layer which is the top part electric blue now I've got it masked all the way around so I'm ready to mix up exactly same way one to one my top layer which is the electric blue now look at that beautiful metallic color it's gonna go really nice on top of that white base Lane fast, call it high speed. I've been working hard, yeah. I've been working nightly. If you think you'll win, ha, no. This is how we're looking before the first layer of clear coat. I'm gonna go to give our so it completely evaporates all the solvents, and I'm gonna come in with a first layer of clear. Well, technically speaking, it's about first three, three layers of clear before the flow code, but float code is going to happen in a couple of days. The clear code I'll be using here, again, nothing special about it, because just the first layer of it. Uh, it's mixing ratio is 2 to 1. That means 2 part of clear code, 1 part of activator, and I usually do about 10% of thinners on the very first run. Uh, on the second run, which is the flow code, I'll show you in a couple of days. Uh, I like to thin it up about 30% of thinners uh, just to make them flow a little bit better but because it's a raw paint I don't want to thin it too much I don't want the thinners to react with the base coat let's do this and this is how we're looking guys after the first layer of clear coat um, I'm pretty happy with it there's no major step through between the colors but I still need to go back with a flow coat, but I'm gonna let it cure for a couple of days and I'll uh, see you guys shortly. And here we are, guys, ready product. Uh, we are a couple of days later, it's a final flow coat of clear, and I don't even think I need to polish it. The gun finish is pretty good, I'm happy with it. There is probably a tiny speck of dust in here and some here, but guys. Uh, you need to remember, knee pads go all the way here and there's a big ass triumph badge go all the way across here and on top, in these four mounting holes, there's a luggage rack that sits directly on top of everything. So even if you have tiny dust particle here and one over there, I'm not going to worry about it because it won't be visible. It will only be covered in badges and, and, and petrol tank rack, so not petrol tank rack, well, a luggage rack. So I think I can get away with it. Other than that, I'm really satisfied. And you know guys, one more thing. I'm really glad I don't need to polish it with many major imperfections because I was after to keeping that a little bit of an orange peel effect because it's not a custom paint job. It's a kind of restoration with a little bit of aggression to it as it's super metallic, you know, sparkle. And the rest of the bike does have orange peel on it. So it would kind of look out of place if that was polished smoothly and the rest of the bike you got the panels and an oil tank and uh, it would be orange peely so i wanted to keep that a little bit of a factory look on it even though it does have that that deep metallic kind of gloss to it on the blue as well as on the uh, on the white bits um classic but with a modern twist i really like that guys i hope you like it i hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new. If you didn't, well, you can always have a beer, rock hard, and we'll see you very soon.